everyone into the latest edition of the usfl podcast interview series bringing you the best of the best of the coaches players and personalities from around the usfl as you may know we had defensive coordinator jaron horton from the pittsburgh maulers on a recent interview really good one you should check that out by the way on our page here on youtube but we also wanted to bring in the other side of the ball someone that you know has quite a bit to discuss in terms of uh Plenty of competition, is, as I'll hint at. I was bringing John Tomlinson, offensive coordinator and QB coach for the Pittsburgh Maulers, coming on to join the USFL podcast. John, thank you very much for uh, coming on to this program. I've, uh, I have I got to say, for you guys, I see all the weapons being brought in by Lonnie Young, and I just got to be excited. I think there's a lot of optimism in the community for what the Maulers could be for 2023. Absolutely, Zach. I appreciate the time and you bringing me on. Very excited. Uh, I came home in uh, July, took maybe two weeks off, and then just started to take one step at a time, looking at what we did. Curve always says, mm -hmm. you know, you have five fingers and you're pointing at somebody, those other four are pointing at you. Take the time and evaluate yourself. And he would always tell the players that. So I just took some time and, and looked at myself. What can I do to help this thing? Uh, get better offensively because the league is unique. It's 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 not college, it's it's not NFL. Well, we spent twelve weeks together, and that's without a playoff. You spend twelve weeks, OTA, um, you know, spring uh, mini camps or summer right. mini camp. I'm sorry, preseason. Uh, we didn't have that. Those guys know each other by the time they kick off week one NFL. College, you have uh, winter conditioning, you have spring football, and then your winter conditioning, there's some football one-on-one -on -one in there. You know, you make sure you, you don't go over the eight-hour rule. And then you have fall camp. That's, you know, modestly speaking, 10 to 12 weeks. Right. We spent 12 weeks playing games that counted. And so we've really done a, a solid job of trying to make sure the off season was going to be different. I feel like that when you finish one and nine, you kind of do go, we weren't, I mean, you're learning a lot. And of course, in that first quick turnaround of a year, uh, people right. I think still don't realize how quickly that season really came, started and went. And now you got a full off season, of course, ahead of yourself. Um, I mean, you, you're of course a QB coach along with the offense coordinator. Your your background is a lot of QB consultant, QB coaching type of skew. I mean, I know you actually have uh, you have learning videos I've seen online that you have yeah. for yourself <laughs> teaching kind of the fundamentals. Uh, what do you what do you take with kind of a league like this where you know you got guys that are coming, they've been in college, they are trying to get to that next level, they need maybe a little more time back, you know, kind of kind of in the lab. I mean. How do you evaluate or at least kind of get those fundamentals to that next step that maybe they didn't get in college or couldn't leap themselves towards in the pros? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> year one was tough mm -hmm. because you're basing everything off of assumptions. In the NFL, you go to the campus, you ask the cafeteria lady, you ask the trainer, you talk to the person at the ticket booth, you speak with assistant coaches, you speak with everybody around the program that's known this player, had relationship with this quarterback. You watch him on the field. You watch him in a combine. We didn't even have that. You're basing everything off of film, relationship with the general manager in the NFL, relationship with the, with the, with the agent. And sometimes the agent, is, that's his guy. So right. he's going to have some bias. So... That was tough. You had guys that already had habits and you do not have time to modify anything when you bring someone in week five or you just met them week one. You know, I try to do a, a decent job with our first two quarterbacks and, and getting them on some Zoom calls before we met. But still, it's not enough time uh, because we don't have interaction. And that time was short. And so, as I said to you, when I started the conversation, I changed all of that. You know, I took care of me first. It's just like when you get on a Southwest flight and they, the lady tells you about the mask, you put your mask mm -hmm. on first. And if you can help the person next to you, you help them. I made sure I could assess what needed to be fixed within myself and how I needed to approach this because of the uniqueness of the league. 
And so that was impossible season one. And, and it was so hard to, to try to uh, tear away habits that you see because you don't have time to fix them because these guys already know in their mind what they believe is correct and how it works for them. You know, you might have a quarterback that comes out of an air rate system. We're a West coast offense. Mm -hmm. Footwork may be a little bit different. He has some fundamental things that he just believes. So you don't want to spend too much time trying to change it because you're preparing for a game. So we, this year was, it was tough, but and I know we'll get to it. Definitely have a different way going forward. <laughs> well, I mean, tough is tough is an understatement, you know, without without a doubt. But I, I think you know, it seemed like there were there was some, there was definitely glimpses. I thought in that in that setup, it just couldn't. You know, as Kirby, I think Kirby even mentioned it several times in his own post game press conferences, just got to be able to punch through at some and be able to finish games is what it was coming down to the wire. There were plenty of close games. The Maulers were in and you very much are realizing that yourself. Um, I mean, what, what, it, I guess automatically, you know, besides like roster moves, what, what did you see in yourself in particular that you're saying, you know, I got this West coast system. I like running this. What do I need to change that could maybe work better for next year? First thing <clears throat> Uh, that I felt like could change is the approach of the off season. Mm -hmm. So that's, I feel like that's been mastered. We signed three quarterbacks, uh, spent a lot of time with each guy in the off season, probably uh, a call a week for the last six to seven weeks since they've been signed. Dang. Okay. Um, so we'll meet, we talk, we talk uh, different concepts and expectations of the concept. So we become relational and, you know, in this business, you know, you have uh, two types of coaches. You, you have a transactional coaches and you have coaches that build relationships, uh, trust. I, I want to see the person thrive. If their aspiration is to play at the next level, I want to do everything I can to help them get there. Uh, and I know guys, when they come in, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you work towards that. So I think this pass off season, that's the first thing. Once you made the corrections of what you feel like needs to be done to get better, now let me talk to each individual. For the quarterbacks that re that are returning, you know, I let them know this is going to be an open competition. You know, they already had the playbook. They already had some understanding of it. And so now the onus is if they want to compete, they come back and they compete. And so, you know, to me, a way of getting back 12 weeks is to create virtual weeks. And essentially, that's what we've done. We've we've created some time together to go over and understand what the expectations are. This is the concept. This is how we read it. This is how we identify the mic, blah, blah, blah. And so I think now going in, this helps uh, alleviate, you know, maybe some issues. I think the teams that had the most success, they already had relationships with players from either the spring league, the coaches, uh, or uh, the NFL academies that they spent time with coaches. So th those guys did an outstanding job. I applaud them. And so I said, well, let me create something similar to that by making sure when these guys are signed, I start talking to them mm -hmm. and we start going through the expectations now. And that's how you build the trust. And as I said, the relationship, because the relationship is important. I find that I like that take, by the way, you talk about the championship teams, just thinking about this, because you know, if you look at it, one thing was evaluated from Skip Holtz, brought a lot of guys from L.A. Tech over and his own guys, Jamar Smith being, one, of course, the main case. And then you look at Bart Andrus, there's your TSL, there's your TSL Spring League connection. Um, and though Brian Scott, of course, didn't finish the season, Case Cookus was able to step in along with a bunch of other guys that were, of course, knowing what was expected, I think, of their head coach. So, maybe, I mean, for you and Kirby and, you know, Jaron, I mean, especially you and Kirby. I mean, that's the thing. It was a brand new setup for both of you. So, you know, I mean, you credit, you have NFL experience that does help, but this was the big, at least leap into an offensive coordinator position for yourself and for Kirby, I believe calling plays. What's that relationship between you two in terms of how the plays are designated during the game? Yeah. So Kirby is the play caller. Um, and while it might have been uh, his first play calling experience in the USFL, He's had experience with it, uh, you know, with Pittsburgh helping with that. Um, I know in Cleveland, he may not have called plays, but he had a lot to do with being involved with the process. And so 
man, I, I learned a lot from him when I was in Oakland with him for a small period of time and when I was in Cleveland. And I, I've always said that, you know, his knowledge of the game goes well beyond just running back play and run game. He understands the passing game. So uh, going through a game week and preparing for opponents was outstanding. I, I, it was a lesson for me constantly because I was always learning something new. Now, I spent time with him in the past, but this was like getting a Ph.D. Okay. And so it, it definitely prepared me more for, for year two in terms of expectation. He, he just did an outstanding job. He, he has a rhythm uh, and a flow to how he wants to call the game. And obviously, uh, I know I need to do a better job with the quarterbacks to help make that rhythm of his possible. And so, uh, like I said, I believe what we've done in the offseason will contribute to that. But in terms of, uh, you know, our protocol in the press box, there's certain things he's looking for. We communicate that with him, uh, to him prior to the play. And, you know, we just be quiet <laughs> after that. And, and you you can ask any play caller that. Uh, and you probably watch the games. You know, those guys want to get into a rhythm. So we allow that. And, you know, we make sure that we're just giving him the information that he needs uh, so he can make the calls. And then we make the adjustments between drives. And you can see that we lost a lot of close ones. Um, mm -hmm. And just at times, the execution just wasn't where it needed to be. But it definitely, we were in position a lot. Yeah, definitely in position a plenty. And I mean, you're going to be getting reinforcements. Like I stated earlier. Um, I actually talked to one of those guys, Deon Daytree and Evans in one of our previous yes. interviews, but I mean, there's other guys that I've been really excited about Dwan, Gary, James Gilbert, you know, Gilbert in particular, he actually comes from my alma mater ball state. So mm -hmm. I'm already thrilled to have him kind of get back in and be in part of this league too. You're going to get quite a ca quality character, but I want to list off the quarterbacks. People, like I said, they've been interested in the QB room. Um, here, here's the whole ones, at least according to the, this is Fox sports. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay. Chase four Cades on here, Vad Lee, Ronald, Ron, Roland rivers, uh, James Morgan, which had plenty of press behind him. A lot of people had things to say and Troy Williams as well. Both of those in a similar signing release as well for the Maulers same day. Um, how are you going to approach QB competition come March? I, you, you got, you got to stress, of course, principles, but you got two guys that know that at least know your system. You got three coming on in. It's basically yeah. going to be a big training camp brawl to figure this yeah, all so, out. I imagine. Yeah, it, it, it'll be fun. Uh, in terms of, uh, reps and pitch counts, we, we have that figured out, uh, and it'll allow us to make a decision fairly early, uh, where guys are ranked. Uh, and so in terms of uh, execution and practice, that's what it all boils down to. Um, so for us, uh, that is the most important thing, you know, how, how they execute in practice in situations and um, we'll go from there. You know, I, I you know, I don't want to give out too much, but uh, I, I actually was looking at that. I mean, I've actually already planned out a practice script. It's already broken okay. out. Yeah. So I'll be ready. Those guys will be ready. And here's the thing that you may not know a lot. Some of these guys that have had a chance to be in the NFL, you know, an average team period, maybe 25 plays. Okay. Some places 30, 20 to 20, 20 to 30, or let's just say that for guys that know they're not going to be on this team. They may be fortunate if they get two plays. Hmm. They usually are there just to be a camp arm and they're out the door. That's the right. business of it. In this setting, even with five quarterbacks, in a team period, they're going to get five plays apiece. That's more than they would have gotten in the NFL. Now, that doesn't count seven on seven. That doesn't uh, account for a situational period or goal line or or, or backed up. Mm -hmm. None of that. Or third down. Just, just that one period. So you can glean a lot from – those reps. And then when you stack on those other periods, you'll know it, it will all come out in the wash. And so uh, we know that we will have cuts. This will allow us to, to, to at least put enough tape together and an evaluation very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean that I'm looking forward to that. And I mean, like you're saying, you're going to get a little more time now to kind of get what your game plan is this year and set up like that. So it's going to be, it's going to be the most fascinating part. I think to a lot of people 
for the Maulers, but you know, whoever gets, whoever gets that starting job, like I said, and I hinted at, you guys got plenty of weapons that have already been signed on. Um, last I checked, you guys actually have the most signings in the league as a team. <laughs> so the retool is very much there. Uh, it very, it feels very alive. And I mean, you lost some, lost a few folks, of course, to the NFL or in those transactions, but you know, you're gaining plenty back. It looks right. like, so it yeah, should be as good. of now it's nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of now, it's nine. So, yeah. And I'm happy for those guys. It's an opportunity for them to continue, you know, the journey that they they set themselves up for. Absolutely. I mean, that's what these leagues are designed for, you know. Exactly. And not, like I said, not only for players, but we've mentioned on our show, for even guys like yourself, that next opportunity, next step, something that you want to take a risk on. I mean, uh, we just actually talked on our show previous week here. Ryan Jones now is new general manager of the Breakers, someone that's going to be getting his first chance at a position maybe he hadn't had a spotlight for in the past. Right. So it should be, you know, it's everything for this league, not just players, but coaches too, as we've discussed. Exactly. Uh, I got to ask you, so this is what the news with Memphis. Clearly people are now going, Oh, we're moving. We're going and traveling around this year. Yes. You know, yes. there's still, of course, some news with, you know, the North. I'm not going to, we do speculations on our show. I'm not going to get into it with you too hard, but um are, are you excited for the, at least the travel aspect, getting into yes. a semi-normal football schedule? I am. Oh, oh I'm so excited about that um, because that feels like football, uh, and it allows us to continue to build a uh, a schedule and a routine uh, as if it's, you know, in a regular environment, not eight teams in a building. Mm-hmm. So I, I really do like that um, because – it, it puts everybody, I don't want to say in a comfortable place. I don't believe that any of us are really comfortable in this process. I mean, if you whether you're coaching or playing, you're, you're in an uncomfortable position to get better. Sure. And so, uh, but I, I do think it feels more normal. You know, it's, it's an upcoming home game. Uh, we, can, we can plan a schedule uh, around that. We're going away. We know when we're practicing. We know when the plane flies out. So I, I really, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you think that helps build camaraderie, getting a little bit more of the travel aspect? I know when, I've actually talked to a lot of arena guys in one of my other shows, and it seems like that's a big deal. Like you get some traditions or things going on in the, you know, with folks. I imagine that helps with that. Yeah. Can you imagine? Okay, let's just talk about Birmingham, and and mm-hmm. and we loved it. By the way, uh, it was a great visit. Uh, there was a Cuban play. I mean, it was a Cuban fusion place. I used to love going to. That's like the greatest memory of mine. Uh, you you had I me wondering remember. if I was going to have to ask that. So now, okay, okay. Miami Fusion. You got to go check it out. I'm, I'm giving the guy a plug because I really enjoyed it. But nice. <laughs> outside of that, when you would leave the stadium, you go back to the hotel. There's no the, the chain of of communication with the players is gone. There is no plane ride back two hours to communicate to uh, kind of, you know, wash everything out, whether it's a win or a loss. So you're absolutely right. The, the, the camaraderie piece, not so much the same. And guys don't feel good when it's a loss. So they go grab their mm-hmm. their pizza from the, the lobby, and then they go upstairs. And then we get up and we do it all over again the next day at 7 in the morning. So I think adding this piece, it feels more normal and routine, and it does mm-hmm. put guys together flying to and away. So I, I think that's a, an awesome piece of it. And I do think that will build camaraderie, camaraderie. Our guys did a good job of doing things to get, together during the season, you know, whether it was bowling or going out to eat. And I, I enjoyed watching that. It sure, it sure seemed like like that. I mean, United Fight Football showed a few things through the lens of like Boogie Roberts and everyone and a few others. But I mean, when you're when you're a one and nine squad and you're able to keep things together, you know that has the that's pretty commemorative. You know, even for losing season, it's to tough things out like that and say we can get the other side and make it better next year. Yeah, I can tell you. Um, I was talking to Delvon Hardaway the other day, mm-hmm. and I said uh, year one felt like. Um, I'm, I have a goat, I'm going to you and I'm giving you the goat for your daughter. Okay. It was, it it felt like an arranged marriage at times, uh, because we didn't really know the players. They didn't know us. They Mm -hmm. learned over the course of 12 weeks, the expectations. Some guys obviously didn't make it through learning those expectations because they got released, but it, it felt like an arranged marriage The goal this year 
is for to feel like something different than I'm trading the goat for your daughter. And so right. that's the goal. We, we want to get past that part. And that's the reason why we're putting in so much work ahead of the process. Well, John, I'm looking forward to see what you guys have ahead. You know, I love all the positive, just this type of movement in that direction. Um, of course, you're mentioning you're talking, you got weekly talks with your QBs. We know I've had plenty of talks with players now that I, we're understanding March is the training camp set up, or at least that generalization of an area for that. What What's in between right now for you between, say, now and said March, you know, else that you're going to be looking at doing? At this point, you know, I, I think I'm just going to spend time with family. Uh, we'll obviously continue to communicate with the players and uh, may take a visit out of the country uh, for a little bit of time. Uh, so when I come back, I'll definitely be ready to go. All right. Well, Coach, thank you very much for joining the show. I'm going to check out that Miami Fusion, by the way. I, I love Birmingham, so I'll, I'll add that to my list Okay. Um, when I go back down. Um but wishing you the best. Looking forward to uh, kind of catching up, see where the offseason goes for you. Absolutely. I appreciate your time. Thank you for the opportunity. No problem. Thank you.